so we have discussed the first part of the pharmacodynamics that is your g protein coupled receptor and the related portion now in this video we are starting with the ion channels okay we have classified ion channels into many groups in previous video so starting first with the ligand gated ion channels so we will discuss many receptors which are ligand gated ion channels so the first one is nicotinic cholinergic receptors okay it is an example of ligand gated ion channels when acetylcholine will bind to nicotinic receptors then there will be influx of the ions so it is known as nicotinic so it is a type of ion channel nicotinic cholinergic receptor is a type of ion channel and ligand is acetylcholine so there are two type of nicotinic receptors nm and nn it is present at neuromuscular junction and it is present in cns and ganglia they are pentameric receptors nicotinic receptors are example of pentameric receptors means it has five subunits okay alpha 1 alpha 2 beta okay gamma and delta these are the five subunits which is present in this nicotinic cholinergic receptors clear now alpha forms ligand binding sites with gamma okay or delta and this is the this is the two unit forms okay two binding site for two acetylcholine molecule two binding site clear so either alpha combines with either of these two or with delta okay these are the two binding site for the acetylcholine these receptors regulate sodium influx or okay this receptor is responsible for sodium influx so this receptor regulates sodium channels clear so nicotinic chronic receptor two types pentameric units alpha form ligand binding sites with either of either of these or this okay two binding site for styrocholine and this is responsible for sodium channels this is related to sodium channel now the next one is gaba and glycine receptor it has five subunits and they regulate chloride channels the next one is nmdn glutamate receptor and they regulate sodium and calcium channel and sometimes it also causes excitotoxicity in case of a stroke okay we will discuss later on when we will discuss about a stroke now this was your ligand gated ion channels now we are moving to for the voltage gated ion channels so voltage gated ion channels the stimulus will be voltage for the types of ion channels and it has four units alpha 1 alpha 2 beta gamma or delta okay either of this one anyone and any four may be present with together so suppose alpha 1 beta gamma alpha 2 okay any combination so basically voltage gated ion channels having four units now this alpha 1 unit has further four subunit that is 1 2 3 4 clear each having six transmembrane domain again i am repeating alpha 1 has further four subunit and each of this subunit has six transmembrane domain okay and out of this all alpha 1 is the main unit clear now three types of voltage gated ion channel sodium channel potassium channel calcium channel and most numerous voltage gated ion channel in what is your potassium channel this is an important mcq question potassium channel most numerous voltage gated ion channel in what is your potassium channel clear now coming to the domain we have discussed six transparent domain is there so six domain are s1 s2 s3 s4 s5 s6 okay and this s4 is the voltage sensor s4 will sense the voltage that is stimulus s4 unit s4 domain is responsible for sensing the stimulus that is voltage sensor and s5 and s6 this form the ion channel between them okay between s5 and 6 ion channel is formed through which ionic influx or efflux will occur <coughs> clear so s5 and s6 is responsible for forming ion channel and this s4 is your voltage sensor the next one is calcium channel so voltage gated calcium channel mainly are of three types l type that is long lasting calcium channel t type transient calcium channel n type neuronal calcium channel so l type calcium channel will be seen on sa node cardiac myocyte av node as well t type that is transient calcium channel will be seen as and, and sa node and thalamic neurons clear and this n type will be present in neurons because the name itself suggesting neuronal calcium channel okay the name itself suggesting that they are neuronal calcium channels clear now some blockers for these calcium channel so for blocking l type calcium channel we can use verampapil or diltiazem or nifedipine for t type valproate and ethosuximide for n type gabapentine and lamotrigine okay so these are the blockers for these types of calcium channels now there is another one that is hyperprotoxin mediated cyclic nucleotide gated ion channels that is scn which you have added in your cardiovascular system okay hyperprotoxin mediated cyclic nucleotide gated ion channels and they are present on hot radiation node and it is responsible for funny current clear and for this type of ion channel there will be two stimulus first one is hyperprotoxin and another one is cyclic nucleotide that is cmp okay there are two stimulus for this type of ion channels now coming to the next we have discussed voltage gated ligand gated then nuclear receptors okay we have discussed ion channels now we are coming for the nuclear receptors so three receptors are present in cytoplasm okay these three receptors are present in cytoplasm but 
they ultimately move to nucleus okay and they are known as nuclear receptor actually they are present in cytoplasm but after coming of the so these are the receptor which are present in cytoplasm but ultimately they will move to nucleus so they are glucocorticoid receptor mineralocorticoid receptor and vitamin d receptor so these are three receptors which are present in cytoplasm but when ligand comes okay when uh, the ligand for glucocorticoid receptor mineralocorticoid receptor vitamin d receptor will come in cytoplasm they will bind and ultimately move to the nucleus now coming to the domains in nuclear receptor so there are six domain a b c d e and f a b will work together c and d individually works and e f united working and e f domain is responsible for the, this domain is ligand binding site they is responsible for binding the ligand and they have carboxy terminal and it is present on outer side a b a b generally associate with co-activators or co-repressors okay and they are they they are amino terminal they are carboxy terminal they are amino terminal and c c is a central conserved dna binding domain which have zinc fingers two zinc fingers and d is for dimerization domain we will discuss dimerization later on okay so six domains in nuclear receptors a b a b c d e and f a b working together for binding of this e f for ligand and c for this dna binding domain central and d for dimerization domain now this receptor nuclear receptors work after dimerization dimerization is needed for the working of this nuclear receptor and dimerization can be of two type either homodim heterodimerization or homodimerization heterodimerization is seen in thyroxine vitamin a and d and this taking example thyroxine receptors dimerize with rxr receptor that is retinoid x receptor so it is forming basically heterodimer okay and then they will they can function and taking in such a way vitamin a and d will also form dimer with rxr receptor so they are the example of heterodimerization thyroxine receptor vitamin a and vitamin d now coming to the hetero sorry homodimerization so homodimerization is seen in growth hormone receptor okay so it will dimerize with growth hormone receptor growth hormone receptor with gr will dimerize with gr er estrogenic receptor with estrogenic receptor okay and ar with ar clear now they are endogenic receptors now one important point here heat shock protein okay so this heat shock protein generally prevent moving of receptor from cytoplasm to nucleus as we have i have told here cytoplasm to nucleus movement but it is prevented by heat shock protein okay this proteins is removed by ligand binding when any ligand for these receptors will come and bind to this receptor then this heat shock protein will be removed and the receptor will move from cytoplasm to nucleus clear now moving to the next that is your transmembrane receptor linked with enzymes okay this is one classification under your receptors we have completed nuclear receptor now we are moving for the transmembrane receptors linked with enzyme so the first is your receptor tyrosine kinase this is an example of transmembrane receptor which is linked with enzyme so receptor tyrosine kinase also needs dimerization for its function the dimerization is of homodimerization type okay it also need dimerization when it will dimerize then it can function now this has two loops intracellular loop and extracellular loop and intracellular loop has tyrosine kinase activity means tyrosine kinase enzyme is binded to the intracellular loop and extracellular loop binds to the ligand clear this is your extracellular loop and the second subunit of the extracellular loop will form homodimer with adjacent loop extracellular loop of another rtk clear so second subunit of extracellular loop forms homodimer with another second loop clear now all growth factors act by rtk receptor that is tyrosine kinase receptor all growth factors except transforming growth factor which acts by serine threonine kinase receptors clear all growth factor act by rtk receptor except transforming growth factor which acts by serine threonine kinase receptor now some growth factor are your platelet derived growth factor nerve growth factor epidermal growth factor insulin growth factor growth factor endothelial derived growth factor vascular endothelial growth factor so they are the they are the basic examples of your growth factor clear now the coming to the functioning of this when ligand will bind then tyrosine is phosphorylated because the enzyme activated is tyrosine kinase so tyrosine kinase will phosphorylate tyrosine and this phosphorylation lead to activation of those proteins which have ss2 unit okay src morphology homology domain so those proteins which have ss2 unit will be activated okay and this ss2 present in this phospholipase c comma pi3 kinase and guanine nucleotide exchange factor gef so this ss2 domain is present in this three clear phospholipase c gamma pi3 kinase and guanine nucleotide exchange factor so this will be activated now so one important point about gef guanine nucleotide exchange factor so gef so it can activate your map kinase 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 that mkkk okay it is also known as ref so gef will activate this and mkkk will activate mkk after phosphorylation and this mkk will activate mk also after phosphorylation the name suggesting kinase and this mk will activate 
will activate certain factor which is responsible for growth of the tumors okay especially muscle growth smooth muscle growth okay so this is one of the reason for tumor so we we are experimenting to develop certain drugs which can inhibit your mk okay now the next one is pi3 kinase this one pi3 kinase is responsible for blood vessel growth and no synthesis okay now the next classification is transmembrane receptor not linked to enzyme clear so only two hormones act by this transmembrane receptor which is not linked with any enzyme so only two hormones what act by this the first one is growth hormone and second one is prolactin clear and the pathway they follow is jack state pathway that is genus tyrosine kinase sing <coughs> signal transducer and activators of transcription clear and state this state also has ss2 unit clear so this is for writing state which have SS2 unit which we have discussed earlier now cytokines also act by jack state pathway these two hormones act by these two hormones also going under acting by transmembrane receptor not linked to enzyme that is jack state pathway and these cytokines also act by jack state pathway cytokines is classified into four categories interleukins interferons csf and timokines cf is csf is colony stimulating factor okay the next one is pattern recognition receptor okay prr so it plays mainly role in innate immunity clear and this pattern recognition receptor one of the this type of receptor is toll like receptor it is tlr okay this toll like receptor when activated will activate mapk map kinase it will activate nf kappa beta that is nuclear factor it is a nuclear factor okay and it, it is a important transcription factor which will induce transcription and this transcription factor will help in coding for all types of interleukins okay and this can cause inflammation clear so it is responsible for causing inflammation this pathway now some intracellular enzymes so certain drugs such as nitrates and sodium nitroprusside drugs act on the intracellular enzymes one of the example is gunyl cyclase and this lead to formation of you know okay so this is all about your